Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Prime Time Edition, hour number two. We got three hours. We're uh, hour number two starting right now. Sirius Channel 159 radio affiliates across the country. Thanks for joining us. I am Drew Martin, joined by Scott Wetzel. Talking the NBA conference finals here, Dallas and Minnesota. We got it minus one, minus one and a half. That's the Mavs as the favorite. 207 and a half as we've seen a tick down in the total. We got the Cubs and the Cardinals. We're starting to get ready to go there in St. Louis, but uh, we're still we're still a little bit away from first pitch. Had a weather delay. Looks like total of eight in the cards, laying minus 145 as the home favorite. It's Sonny Gray going for the Redbirds. Julian Assad going for the Cubs. We are final in the NHL uh, with the Rangers beating the Panthers 5-4 to four in overtime. We also got some, what, college baseball, college softball. I you know, we we had the uh, the the football, what United Football League. Are, are any of these other kind of quote unquote niche sports catching your attention here, Scott? Or are you getting involved in anything else outside of the kind of major American sports right now? I'd say I'd say the French Open, but uh, that doesn't start till uh, early in the morning. So we could do something along those lines. We do have a WNBA game starting in an hour. Now, sure. normally, okay, it's it's, uh, it's got to be Caitlin Clark, right? No, it does not involve Caitlin Clark, but it's a decent little betting angle, Drew, if, if you just need a couple of shekels to, you know, have some fun tonight. So we have uh, Dallas taking on it. Every way turn, it's Dallas, right? So whether it's the, uh, you know, Stars or, or uh, Cowboys or, or obviously um, the, uh, the Mavs tonight. So um, we got the Dallas Wings of the WNBA playing at the LA Sparks. Sparks laying one and a half. Now, why, okay, why is this so interesting? You know, only because Drew Dallas played last night. And in the WNBA, that doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen in the NBA often, let alone the WNBA. So uh, we saw this happen with Indiana last night. They played two nights ago, and then they played last night, and they lost by 20 points, or 19, I think it was. Uh, now they were 16-point underdogs, but still, it, it's very difficult, especially on the road, to play back-to-back, -back, and that's what you're asking Dallas to do. You want to play a little hunt? You need some action? Uh, I would grab the L.A. Sparks, who are not good, don't get me wrong, but uh, at, at home, Sparks minus one and a half against Dallas. WNBA action on a Sunday night. Scott Wetzel, right. opposite picks on do what we Twitter do. for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's right up uh, the alley of what we need, man, for Sunday night action. I might join you on that one. Got to pull it up uh, maybe at the break. But, um, Scott, I, I, I want to ask you, opposite picks, that's uh, where you can follow them on Twitter. Is that about, like, going going against the grain? Where, where did opposite picks actually – how'd you come up with that? Yeah, that started many, many moons ago. I was working uh, over at – it was called 101 Sports, then Sporting News Radio Network. So we were hosting a morning show, and really it evolved from just, like, looking at the, the you know the lines on a Friday, me and my, my co-host, and we're just going over the games. And, um, and this is, again, literally 20 years ago. So maybe not 20, but, yeah, you know, about that. So anyway, it was just like you see all these crazy lines, right? And then like Rutgers would be like pick them against Indiana when Rutgers was really horrible. You know, then you find Rutgers winning or, you know, and, and we would, you know, come up with all these lines that just didn't make any sense. And yet in the end, they ended up winning. So just kind of like out of the blue, I remember saying, you know, if we went opposite all this stuff, you know, I, I bet we would win more. And, uh, you know, then we started keeping track of it, Drew, and then it just basically involved uh, to a segment and then a whole website and podcast and opposite picks. Here we are. But it's the, yeah, it's the philosophy going against the grain, to, to make a long story short. Yeah. If you go, you know, if you're on the side of the boys of Vegas versus the public, you'll win a lot more. There's, there's big, nice, large casinos making a whole lot of money for a reason so opposite picks does make sense yeah being on the side on the other side of the counter uh it it, it makes total sense so um man i i was seeing them sweep off uh the water here in st louis but uh, i'm not seeing first pitch time just yet and in the nba it says what 803 for for the uh for the they tip just off tipped here. off okay yeah okay i don't i don't have yeah. it on what, what what channel is it on tonight uh, looks like TNT. TNT. He's got it tonight. Yeah. Okay. Last year for, for uh, might be the last year anyway. Last year the contract. So. How do you think that's going to go? Where that ends up? 
Yeah. I, I mean, don't that, know. That you know listen, sell. someone's going to pay a gazillion dollars for it. But re in reality, Drew, I mean, the ratings aren't great. You know, I mean, if you want to base them on, uh, you know, football, they, they pale in comparison. They're not even close, right? But same thing with hockey. Um, but they're going to probably get a gazillion dollars, you know, whether it's ESPN, the four-letter network there, or it's TNT redoing it, or, you know, one of these streaming services may, may pay a bundle. It's, it's a weird league, you know. I, to me, in my friends, it's getting less and less popular. If not for gambling, it would be, you know, people are so disgusted with the play. There's no defense. Officiating is awful. Um, you, you name it, they, they kiss the players, but, you know, you, you know, all the things that people say about the NBA, it's just, it's an awful product. It really is. These, these postseason games have been awful. I mean, it's been one blowout after another. Um, but you know what? The, with the TV contracts being up, the, they'll get a, no doubt record breaking numbers, record breaking numbers. People will pay through the roof. Uh, to be able to televise these games. When in reality, I, I just don't think people care anymore about the NBA. It's, it's a bad product. It really is. It's an interesting kind of, I don't know, dynamic happening for sure in the sports world overall. I mean, I, I know it's not apples to apples, but we saw it in Major League Baseball a little bit. It's it, it's not the exact same thing, but like do you, you remember like Blake Snell, um, a couple other guys, big name guys coming up and they didn't get the contracts they wanted and ended up signing for, yep. you know, less time, less money. Yeah, Jordan Montgomery yeah. being another one. And I, I almost wonder, you know, kind of that opposite picks mentality. Are we heading the other way in terms of people are realizing like, man, all this money up front and it, it can kind of go to the business side of it as well. Are we going to make back the money? Probably not. You know, to tell you the truth, like whoever gets the NBA deal, are they are they going to make the money back in the ratings, you know, for advertisement, for, for, for right. that such thing? I don't know, Scott. I really don't. Like if I, if I was one of these CEOs, you know, who knows, Amazon, even Netflix now talking about getting into it. I don't know if they're going to make the money back, particularly in the NBA, because I don't disagree with what you're talking about. You know, when you watch college basketball in March Madness and then you watch the NBA, it is a different product. And outside of gambling, is it that great to watch? I mean, NBA fans would probably say, yeah, but is it going to continue to grow like that and can continue to bring more eyeballs in? I have my kind of... Uh, I, I have my worries about that with the NBA. I really do, Scott. So I don't disagree with you. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of Adam Silver, the commissioner. I think he's a boob. I, I really do. I, I think he's the most incompetent commissioner that I've ever known, really, honestly. I mean, I, he's got this league just going downward. Players don't want to play, Drew. I mean, they, they're taking days and games off. People are paying hundreds of dollars for these tickets, and, and these guys don't even want to play in the regular season. There's such a bad aura. So you're right. I don't think whoever pays the money that they're going to have to pay, billion dollars is literally going to be it, right? Will they make that money back in sales and stuff? No, but if you're starting a service and you want to get yourself on the map, um, then the, 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 it'll be all the intrinsic values of, hey, we're the home of the NBA, where they'll make their money. Um, that, that's where they're going to do it. But in actual advertising, because you're going to get 15 million viewers for an NBA playoff game, you're not even going to come. You're not even coming close to that. So no, you can put reruns of Seinfeld on and get better ratings than you can these NBA playoff games. <laughs> and we get the finals on uh, what the sixth of June. So uh, we are underway though in Dallas. Three, two, ten and a half minutes left in the first quarter. So we're just getting started here. Mavs up to the uh, early short lead. He's Scott Wetzel. I'm Drew Martin. Guys, short break. We'll be right back. Sports Grid. salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families. 
and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on SportsGrid. And now you have to qualify in these majors. You, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Tabor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now. And, and, you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Primetime Edition, Sirius Channel 159, radio affiliates across the country. Thanks for joining us. Scott Wetzel, Drew Martin. Keep me updated in the NBA. We got Minnesota and Dallas tipping off and eight minutes left in the first quarter. So we're four minutes in, nine to six. Mavs on top of the Timberwolves. They did close minus one and a half point home favorites, 207, 207 and a half being the total we got cubs and cardinals still in weather delay for mlb and we got the wnba game dallas and la the sparks minus two point home favorites 164 and a half being the total scott uh, uh broke it down in the last segment but uh we'll get you ready for that before 9 p.m eastern tip off but scott we were talking a little bit here about uh cy young matchups is that is that a market you you dig into and ha have had success betting no uh, honestly but i did look at it this week because i knew we, we were have some shows uh, lined up where there might not be uh, that much going on and i tell you there's a number I, i'll i'll uh, we'll play, have a little fun here and i i can't see the numbers right now because they're, they're too far away i'm blind so but <laughs> there was one guy Drew, that really kind of like, wow, I'm I'm surprised. I think, you know, I hate this phrase. I really do. People that watch here know that. I, I hate value. Right? Just, is, is he going to win or he's not going to win? Right? I don't care about the value. I don't care if he's 100 to 1. Uh, if he's not going to win, then who cares? He can be 1,000 to 1, right? But there is one guy on that list who pitched today, oh, by the way, that helped his cause that to me is like, wow. Um, I think he's got a decent shot. Let, let's see if uh, if you have the numbers there in front of you, then, then you could kind of um, sure. pick out the one I'm looking at. Well, I, I guess we can read them all. I mean, Zach Wheeler, he is uh, okay. the front runner, plus 360. We got Imanaga, plus 480. I like him. Chris Sale, I could see it as well, plus 550. Followed by Tyler Glasnow, plus 800 we get ranger suarez nine to one so already two phillies here and what the top five dylan cease who has been absolute money um outside of just last night against the yankees he's uh what 14 to one logan webb there for the giants having a great season 21 to one zach gallon for the diamondbacks 25 to one freddie peralta and the brewers 29 to one and max freed 30 to one so, um, I mean, in terms of, I guess, the way you were teeing it up, I would go I will with say the this big. Though. Okay. The, uh, the, guy, the guy I was talking to, the numbers are nowhere close. And I'm telling you, I put this in uh, 
May 21st. So what, what's that? Um, today's the 27th. So uh, less, less than a week ago. It was Chris Sale. Um, mm-hmm. Drew. Chris Sale a week ago was 18 to 1. And when I saw that, you know, just, like I said, just coming up with different things. And I generally don't bet on, on these futures. It's just the season's like way too long, right? Who wants to put their money away? You know, and now that you're doing on this line stuff, you know, they, they take your money out of your account. It's not you know, just credit to you. You got to actually take the money out of the account. Who wants to wait until literally November, right? I mean, literally it's November when they start handing out these awards. We're past college football. You know, we're almost done with college football you know, by the time you can actually win. But... When I saw those numbers, Chris Sale eighteen to one. So now he's down. Now he's a modest five to one. So that's how much that dropped in one week. So you talk about these markets. Um, you know, sometimes when you just kind of scan over things, if you don't put it in right away, boy, the, the next day, a couple days later, it, it's not the same. And I'm telling you, I got him at eighteen to one. Put a decent number on him, and, and hopefully uh, he won again today. What is he now? Nine and one ERA, right around two. Uh, he's going to play on a great team. You know, the Braves, they're going to be there in the end. He's going to win a lot of games that maybe he shouldn't, but he's pitching great anyway. Even at 5-1, to one, now that's not, you know, 10-1, to one, I'd say still do it. 5-1, to one, I don't know if it's really worth it to 5-1, to one, to be honest with you. But that's the guy I was referring to. But again, I got him at 18-1. to one. Yeah, it's definitely cutting into kind of the kickback, you know, what 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 you're getting back if you do nail it. And you're right, man. These these numbers move a lot in the futures. I mean, yeah. just off of like one start, it's kind of wild. Um, and yeah, I was gonna say, you know, the big tall lefty Chris Sale. So I I, I knew where you were going with that. And you also brought up, you know, he plays with the Braves. It brings up a, a situation, guys, when you're betting these futures, particularly like Cy Young, things of that nature, MVP in some sports. It matters the team you're playing on. And I bring that up because three years ago, Scott, I bet on Sandy Alcantara to win the Cy Young at plus 200. Uh, 20 20 to 1. It was 200 to 1 is what I'm getting at. So it it was a huge plus price. This is before he won the Cy Young, before people really started to get to know him. I'm a Marlins fan. I watched this guy pitch. He was throwing 100 miles an hour, getting everybody out. And if you remember that year, it was the year before he won the, the Cy Young. I, I was a year right. too early. And he was going up against, like, I think Corbin Burns won the Cy Young that, that year. And what I'm getting at is he played for the Marlins. They did not have a good season. They weren't playing big games at the end of the year. And nobody was watching him. And I guess my overall point is it matters that the pitcher is – playing for a good team that's going to make the playoffs because if he's not not as many people talk about him and I think that you know to use the word you hate I I think it's overused as well but the value it's part of the equation of what team they're playing on and sure enough the Braves hey they haven't been actually playing that great of baseball recently but they're likely going to be in the playoff mix at the end so I think that's part of the equation and I think it, it, it fits the bill for Chris Sale being on the Braves. Yeah, you wouldn't think that would matter, Drew, because, you know, the guys that are voting on this are baseball reporters, you know, guys that really follow the game, theoretically anyway, not the fan who says, all right, Miami stinks, so it can't be in You know, it's guys that actually cover these teams, so that you, you think, you know, they wouldn't fall into that trap, but they do. They, they definitely do. You know, you, you get an extra bonus. So those teams are on TV a little bit more. People are talking about those teams a little bit more. They're pitching in bigger spots. You know, so um, I yeah, I, I like you know trying to, and you know most importantly, you, you get games where he might not pitch great, but the Braves will put five runs on the board, and you'll get a win. Yeah, it, it wins probably matter as well. Um, but hey, he's Scott Wetzel at Opposite Picks. I'm Drew Martin at Drew Martin Bets at Sports Grid at Sports Grid TV. Guys, short break. We'll be right back. Sports Grid. We salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families. 
and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Giffen came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on SportsGrid. And now you have to qualify in these majors. You, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now. And, and, you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Primetime Edition Sunday night here, Sirius Channel 159, radio affiliates across the country. Thanks for joining us. Scott Wetzel, Drew Martin, Minnesota and Dallas. We are underway in the first quarter. Four minutes left, actually. So eight minutes in, 21-19, Mavericks on top of the Timberwolves. Cubs and Cardinals still in weather delay is what I'm seeing. Minus 145. That's the Cardinals as the home favorite. Total of eight. You know, Scott, uh, yeah, you're, you're Chris Sale that uh, – for the Cy Young, man, you got a good number. I heard you talking uh, uh, off camera a little bit. As a Red Sox fan, though, does it does it sting you a little bit um, with, with Chris Sale not yeah. being on the team any longer? Yeah. I mean, listen, the guy hasn't pitched much the last couple of seasons, but, you know, I, I was not in favor of trading him because I figured once you move him, then the guy's going to be completely healthy. And you trade him to the Braves, right? I mean, you didn't trade him to the uh, – no no offense to your Miami Marlins, but you didn't trade him to a team that's going to be awful. You traded him to a team that's going to be great. So I figured he'd have a good year. Maybe not this good, nine and one. You know, ERA right around two, two and a quarter. Uh, I think it is. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I liked him. Helped get us a World Series. Don't blame him for the contract. You know, I was telling uh, Jack. You know, Dave Dombrowski. Uh, you know, gave him that idiotic contract. They never blame a player for. You know, what are you expected to do? Say no. I don't want that much money. So I don't blame him for that. Uh, so I, I got, you know, I would have liked to have had him stay a Red Sox just because he's probably going, you know, I don't know. You got to check his hall of his uh, numbers. Is he going to go to the hall of fame? I got to see. Um, but if so, that would have been kind of like, he's our guy. Now it's kind of like mismatch. You think of him as a white sock. You think of him as a red sock. If he wins the world series with the Braves plays a few more years, he's kind of all over the place, but what's he got about 200 wins. I have to check it out. He's on pace for it if he can stay healthy. Let's put it that way. Baseball. Always go to baseballreference.com. Nice and easy. Uh, I like Chris that Sale. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not bad. He has. Uh, oh no, never mind. 127 wins only. Wow, that's amazing. I, I would have guessed about 200, but he's been hurt. So he's not going to Hall of Fame. Definitely not. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Only a, only 127 wins for Chris Sale. That's almost like, how's that possible? The guy's won Cy Youngs. He's been second in Cy Young voting and everything. But he's always hurt. Yeah. Amazing. I'm with you. Yeah, that that is uh, kind of surprising. I would have thought a lot more as well. I mean, you bring up not Hall of Fame. I, I feel like he still will. I mean, Chris Sale top line i i don't know that there's that many pitchers 
in, in our lifetime that are better than him. You know, when he's really, I mean, there are probably, I wouldn't rank him first, but it's not like we would throw out a whole bunch of names. You know what I mean? Like when he's, when right. he's on and it's Chris sale, a, a game, that's about as good as it gets in my opinion, Scott. Yeah. Probably just, he never won 20 games. 127 and 81, which is a pretty good split. ERA, you know, in the steroid era at 3.08, which is pretty good. You know, pitching a lefty at Fenway Park, you know, so he's got some things working in his favor for him not to have monster, monster numbers. But he's 35. He's going to get what? If he's lucky, another 40 wins. You know, if he pitches 36, maybe 37, another, you know, this includes this year. So, Another 30 wins. He's going to end up about 160, 170 wins. Probably won't get it done. Um, even 160 and 100, I don't think would, would really. He'd be a good case, but probably not. He'd be on that category of like your all-time best roster of not Hall of Famers. Chris Sale would be like right, right at the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> right on the outside looking in. What about your Red Sox? Yeah. I mean, a game over 500, won what, five of their last seven? Uh, th- this Red Sox team coming into the season, a lot of people were like counting them out in the AL East. Yet, hey, they're yeah. I mean, they're in the playoff mix. They'll be they'll be right there. They'll, they'll be a playoff, or, or they'll be like a five hundred team. Um, you know, if five hundred keeps you in the postseason, then they'll be bad on for a playoff spot. You know, it, it's like um, you know a, a number of teams. I think will be like that way. They're, they're going to be five hundred club. Um, Better than I thought. No, I figured they would be like this, Drew. I, I, I thought their pitching staff would be pretty good, and it is. Thought their lineup it would suffer, and it has. Um, I'd like to see if they're going to be buyers versus sellers at the trade deadline. Um, I don't expect them to win the division, but in the American League, you know, they might be able to hang around uh, and at least battle for a wild card spot. That would be nice in September. Sure, I could see it. I mean, you know, winning the AL East might be a little bit much. So it's a great. Great division, but I I could see the Red Sox in the postseason. Scott Wetzel, Drew Martin, short break, guys. We'll be right back. Sports Grand. We salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families, and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify, and these majors, you, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, "I'm not." You know what you signed up for, so I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm-hmm. So, in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and and you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Mm-hmm. 
Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Prime Time Edition. Drew Martin, Scott Wetzel here for the next hour and a half. We are uh, halfway through the show, three hour show, and uh, looks like we are going to get Cubs and Cardinals at some point. They are in in a, in a weather delay, but uh, it does look promising. And we are underway in the NBA. Uh, actually, coming to the end of the first quarter now. It's twenty nine twenty three. Mavericks on top of the Timberwolves under a minute left in the first quarter. So we'll keep you updated there in the NBA. We got um, Eric Lindquist alongside and speaking of the NBA, he, he, he knows the association. He knows the betting markets here. So uh, happy to have him. And uh, Eric, happy uh, Sunday night here, holiday weekend. Thanks for joining us. How's the weekend treating you? Uh, good until I have to watch my Timberwolves lose again tonight. Uh, this is just painful, <laughs> suffering, personified. Why does this keep happening to me? Uh, this is just a bad quarter yet again here. Derek Jones Jr. Uh, is just kind of getting to the rim here now. Uh, quick five for him. Luca up to eight already. Anthony Edwards, I was expecting some big stuff from him. Hopefully we can get him up north of 30, north of 35 for some alt props that I have going. But um, Mike Conley to the locker room. We'll see how this pans out. Yeah, last last time we spoke, Eric, uh, you were all happy and glib, and why wouldn't you have been? You know, you, you just finished off beating the Denver Nuggets. So you got everything riding your way. I thought they would have not an easy time, but I thought they would win this series. I'm not giving up hope, but I got to tell you, you know, down, I got a 31-23 here, final seconds. Down two games to none, I, I thought they would come out flying tonight, and that that's not been the case. I mean, what, what's happened to this team? They're tired, apparently. Uh, they're professional athletes who are very, very tired at the moment. You played four games at altitude. You saw six-game series there. Dallas got the extra couple days of rest, and it's showing out in this series. Uh, Anthony Edwards, he's 22, still learning to maybe manage his body and, and just uh, his overall workload come playoff time. You know, it's something that guys like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they haven't had instant results necessarily here either. Um, so Anthony Edwards has been a huge part of this team. And then Carl Anthony Towns, not – being Carl Anthony Towns so far as well, 0 for 3, 0 points here in this first quarter. We ended up having to bench him, played 26 minutes there in the game too, went to Nas Reed because Nas Reed was on an eternal heat check. We need our stars. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Cat and Ant need to be the guys. They were in the Denver series. They have not been so far against Dallas. And Eric, as we're watching the game here, it just went to the uh, end of the first quarter with uh, what Dallas up uh, by a couple. Are, are you liking anything right now in game live uh, to, to get down on? I was thinking about maybe like a Minnesota first half, if you could get in at a decent number here now. I didn't make anything pregame on that one. I was pretty prop centric. And I think that there's probably something to be said. If Mike Conley is going to go to the locker room, I'm not thinking that they'll go to any Gobert, Cat, Nas Reed lineups anyway, but there's at least the chance that they try it out here. Uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker ends up being the primary ball handler in a lot of these lineups where Mike Conley goes to the locker room. So if you can find some old props on him potentially, or some live props on him, that might be a place to go and take a look at it. But, um, just kind of the rotations, the way things break down, we've seen quick hooks there early in the first quarter for, for Luka Doncic, this line change that they have between Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford. You're basically trying to just like time that correctly. If you're looking at a first half play here. I think there might be a better chance in like the next three or four minutes here if they continue to have Luka and Kyrie on the floor together to start the second quarter where Minnesota gets down seven, eight, nine, maybe taking a, a play on that first half on the Minnesota side and trying to really get that long shot number. But uh, it is pretty tough and grim knowing Mike Conley's still in the locker room to project out the minutes too well. Hmm. How about the over-under, uh, Eric? It's weird. You know, every game in the Celtic uh, Pacers series has gone over, 3-0 and over. First two in this series, over. Yet they're still giving us a number that you know, it's pretty modest to start the game at, at 207 and a half, 208. You know, these teams have played six times this year. Six. Every single game has had more than 208 points. And, and even now... You finished with a flurry, uh, no, don't get me wrong, but well, mm -hmm. you have 61 points in the first quarter, and, and they're still only giving you 216 and a half. I mean, you, you know, usually people bet overs, right? You would think it would be the other way around with the boys in Vegas. They would make that number really painful, but it's, you know, that that's a pretty good start with 216 and a half total right now, no? Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I'm just kind of working through the box score, and you know, you've saw pretty modest shooting, I think, from the Minnesota side. 
50% but it was good from the field, but 37.5% from three. It's not like we knocked the doors down off of it. And Dallas, they shot 58% and then 50% from three. So, I mean, they were the hot side of things. I wouldn't mind a play on that over, actually. I think it's projecting at pretty darn well. I wouldn't go crazy with it by any means, but um, the one issue I do have is just what that offensive rating looks like for Minnesota with Mike Conley off the floor. He's been a net positive for us on both ends constantly throughout this entire series, and you're replacing him with an offensive zero, basically, and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. I know he had a couple of games uh, in previous series that were pretty decent where he was able to knock down shots, but it's been tough sledding for him from the field in the last four or five games for the Timberwolves. His minutes have waned as a result. If he has to play more, that is not going to be a positive for this total for sure. Eric, you said um, a, a little bit earlier you, you were more prop centric, I think was the word you used. What, what did you have circled? <laughs> what did you fire away in, in, in the prop market? Yeah, 30 plus on Ant, 35 plus, looking for the legacy game. He p- shot the ball so terrible, and now you're getting kind of the prices that, that back it up. I thought just going to some alt numbers where in the event that he's healthy and that this is just him being tired from the first couple of games there, we're going to see positive shooting regression eventually for a player of his caliber. This is probably the worst three games shooting stretch that we've had for him by far. And now the numbers have plummeted on him in a number of spots. They're on the road, which I think also bolsters the number a little bit there. But uh, with the back against the wall here, down 0-2, I think you're going to see an eternal amount of minutes, as many minutes as Anthony Edwards can humanly possibly handle. And it was just kind of a play on those minutes. I thought getting some alts together with him, if you wanted to package up rebounds, assists made some sense. But the one thing that I know Ant is out there to do is to score the basketball. And as I say that, Mike Conley checks in for Anthony Edwards to start the second quarter. So uh, a lot of the things that I just said there, uh, you can you can rest easy on Mike Conley. I do think 216 and a half, pretty decent play there if you, if you jumped in on that live total um, with Mike Conley back in there. And then uh, Anthony Edwards there, a uh, decent enough start there, still at nine points. So feeling pretty good about that one. What would the NBA do, Eric, if, if, you know, Boston and Indiana figures to be a sweep? uh, And and we'll get to that here in a little bit, I imagine. And and if this ends up being a sweep, I mean, we'd have a week plus literally of no basketball. I mean, the NBA's got to be frowning upon this right now, no? Yeah, that's silly for them. But you know what? After uh, breaking down the NBA for seven consecutive months, a uh, little bit of NBA draft you're coming up, I suppose. But <laughs> I could use the break. So I'm okay with it. I- I'm happy yeah. to go grind in the MLB streets. Uh, just one sport, one week. Sounds great to me. Uh, we've got some golf coming up this week where we probably won't have Scotty Scheffler uh, this weekend. So uh, maybe some advantageous numbers on golfers who can actually win events there. Uh, didn't have a Davis Riley ticket or anything today, but uh, I could use a little bit of the break. I'm sure other people in the industry could as well. Um, I'll be looking forward to whoever, whomever Boston plays here. Probably not going to be my Timberwolves at this pace, but that is all right by me. I think it'll be a very fun series. I think uh, Kyrie back in Boston for game one and two. Tell me that that isn't going to be entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Could definitely say they that really sure. They, they really hate him. They don't like him at all. And also, mm, if he pulls no. out the incense for game one, pre-game one, <laughs> it will be must-see TV. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, the, the first time around didn't go very well for Mr. Kyrie. So, it, Eric, it, what other sports do you concentrate on? You, you brought up MLB there, golf. So, so is it yep. NBA as well? And just yep, those NBA three? as well. So NBA, MLB, PGA, NFL. Uh, so those are my those are my babies. All the pros. Uh, I've got a number of guys that uh, are in house at Odd Chopper where I work at, where they are the college guys that you want to be paying attention to. I know you guys do an amazing job here on this channel as well. So uh, I'll let the, everybody else handle the college. I'll stay in the pro streets. Eric Lindquist. All right. Well, guys, we got a short break. More on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Sports Grid. We salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice 
of our military veterans and their loving families, and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify, and these majors, you, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, "I'm not." You know what you signed up for, so I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So, in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and and you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Primetime Edition. Drew Martin, Scott Wetzel here for another uh, what until. 10 p.m. Eastern time. It's Minnesota and Dallas going at it right now as it's uh start of the second quarter. Dallas up uh, by five. They were laying one, one and a half before tip. 207 as we saw some under money come in before the tip off. Cubs and Cardinals still in weather delay. Cardinals minus 145 favorite. We're talking with Eric Lindquist this segment at Eric Lindquist on Twitter. Find his work at uh, at odds shopper as well. But Eric, you brought up uh, MLB, a little PGA, bet in the links, NFL as well. Do you have more success in one sport over the other? And like, what's your favorite sport to kind of dig into in the in the betting markets? Yeah, I think the most successful for me has been basketball routinely year in year out. But last year, MLB. Just the, the quantity of bets you can get down over the course of an MLB season. If you can be early to certain park factors, changes there, being on unders when Baltimore changed that that left field fence, uh, when you got soft tossing lefties in there, small, small edges here and there, you can just get so like a larger quantity of bets for that compared to an NFL season where it's going to be a very short sample size. It's going to be one of the more efficient uh, sports that you can have out there. NFL, probably my worst in terms of ROI, but uh, NBA, definitely far and away, number one. Uh, number two, MLB for me. And then uh, PGA is like my baby. Uh, you played college golf at Iowa State back in the day. And so I uh, know a couple of players on tour just got into golf betting very early on in uh, 13 years of doing this here now. And that was my first love, but uh, nothing like the NBA for me. All right, let me go back to the NBA then. Uh, I, I can't believe that uh, the Indiana Pacers are trailing three games to none uh, because they inbound the basketball, you, you win game one, right? And you have a near 20-point lead in game three, you know, second half, you know, relatively late. I mean, you should be able to win at least one of those two games, and yet here they are 0-3. Well, what, what, what's going on with the Pacers? Yeah, uh, Rick Carlisle, we got to figure out some coaching yeah. decisions and, and do those things Thank better, uh, like calling timeouts and advancing the ball up a floor, uh, potentially not letting Jalen Brown take that shot, period, under any circumstances. I think uh, probably the most under-talked about part of that game is just foul Jalen Brown there. He's not going up immediately when you're in his face. He pump fakes. And as soon as he does and brings the ball back down, you have to be fouling in that situation. So a little bit on Siakam there as well. But Rick Carlisle has not been extremely sharp with some of the rotations that he's ran out at times. I think you have to be putting T.J. McConnell out for more than 30 minutes in games 
where you don't have Tyrese Halliburton as a floor general. Maybe this was special circumstances. Nemhard got really, really hot. Ben Shepard, they felt more comfortable with 26 minutes of him. I didn't feel more comfortable with him. 0 for 3 from 3. DJ McConnell, one of the more underrated players over the last year and a half, just in terms of estimated plus minus and what he adds to a floor. So TJ McConnell, I see some interesting numbers at open on him. I think might be looking at some overs on him, but I am for sure going to be shorting Andrew Nemhard, 15 and a half points, uh, sitting a little bit better than plus 100 over at DraftKings here at the moment. A couple of other books still uh, some interesting numbers that are a little bit worse than that, but I like shorting Andrew Nemhard. You can't possibly tell me you're going to see a better performance than you saw from him in that game three. I think, I'm with you where I see Boston going absolutely ballistic, closing this thing out, having the long rest. Uh, everything is in their court. And w- what about kind of parlaying that? Um, are you a futures better at all, Eric? And uh, how do you think th- this finishes? You know, who, who becomes the NBA champion? Yeah, well, I, I like to think of myself as being sharp with that stuff as somebody who had to burn New York Knicks tickets uh, in at the altar. <laughs> Not feeling super great about some of my series bets so far. Uh, I do have a 4-0 and a 4-1 ticket here on the Boston side of things. Uh, kind of, eh, kind of hedged it out a little bit, which uh, makes me a little bit of a coward for doing it. But hey, uh, I like the money, and I thought that the Celtics 4-0 sweep made a lot of sense with Halliburton's injury. Um, getting getting more money down on that side of things, but I. Do you think we're going to see Boston as a pretty heavy favorite, regardless of who we get in the Western Conference side of things? I'm probably going to be Western Conference or pass when we get to that point, but it's hard to know here without seeing the exact number. I saw some prospective series prices on who it would be if they faced Minnesota or Dallas, but it's hard to say because injuries can happen as games are playing out here on the on the Western Conference side of things. Uh, hopefully this series can extend as a fan and as somebody who's p- potentially wanting to to back them at a better number. But uh, Boston is the best team in the NBA by just about every single metric. They're going to be in a very advantageous spot playing at home here for, you know, four of seven games for an NBA finals. They're a tough team to want to go and and bet against. You know, you could have made some serious money being early to the party on what, minus 150, minus 155 for them to win the NBA finals here before these series started. They're looking better and better uh, than that price right now for sure. Hey, uh, you mentioned golf there, that you enjoyed golf. How about Davis Riley? You know, he was plus 110. We had Brady Cannon on who talks a lot of golf with us here. He was plus 110. I've never seen a guy be have a four-shot lead, Eric, heading into the <laughs> final round and still be plus money. That, I, mean, I know it was Scotty Scheffler in second place, but, boy, you're looking for live underdogs. That was it because he ended up winning by, what, four? I think four or five shots, right, when everything was said and done. It was incredible. So shout out Davis Riley, smooth swing and Davis, Davis Riley. Very, very happy for him. Uh, I know that he was a Dallas guy. I think originally you grew up with Jordan Spieth, really, really nice kid. He's around my age, uh, was better than me at golf, if you can believe that. But uh, Davis Riley is an awesome guy. I was happy to see that W for him. But I want to point out something to take even further. Scotty Scheffler was seven shots back going into Saturday's round. He was the second betting favorite. It was the dumbest thing that I've ever seen. He goes out and shoots 63. It's just something to keep in mind. When Scotty Scheffler is in a golf tournament, you're generally going to see some insane pricing the entire week. Absolutely. I, I, it's interesting what's happened in, in, in the PGA. Uh, I mean, are there any guys you have circled going forward that you, you think we can make some money on in, in, on the links? Yeah, there's a couple of guys. Just It's horses for courses. You, you want to look at the schedule coming down the pipeline. Thinking about just pure ball strikers as we get to the U.S. Open mix, uh, we're going to be having uh, you know Open Championship coming up here shortly as well. They have prices out for a lot of those spots. I don't see anything that's just absolutely jumping to the forefront for me, but we're starting to see a guy in Benny on who's just annihilating the golf ball, playing really well at majors. I think if you're looking for major long shots, if that putter can stay hot, he is a dangerous player to be back in. salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend 
to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify, and these majors, you, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, "I'm not." You know what you signed up for, so I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, a hundred percent think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So, in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and and you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Primetime Edition, Sirius Channel 159, radio affiliates across the country. Thanks for joining us. Looks like uh, the Mavericks up. 43-33, up by 10 here, eight minutes left in the second quarter, and we are still in weather delay for Sunday night baseball. Shout out to Eric Lindquist. He was just joining us. Follow him on Twitter, at Eric Lindquist, and his work at Odd Shopper. We're talking a little golf there, and of course, the the tragic story, uh, just what, yesterday, the day before, Grayson Murray passing away at just... Uh, a young guy. I mean, I believe in his, his early 30s here, Scott, and it, it's a tragic oh, story yeah. overall. And and one thing we were talking a little bit yesterday uh, with Brady Cannon and Scott, you know, it's one of those things in golf. He, he, he struggled uh, with it, with addiction and, and with alcohol and things of that nature. Um, Scott, it, it almost brings up like, do you think that that is something in golf that that is more prevalent than I think a lot of people realize uh, guys not being maybe in, in tip top shape? coming into the weekend and playing tournaments or do you think that's that's very rare in the pga i mean i haven't heard anyone else you know uh, decide to kill themselves if that's where you want to go with that you know just the pressures of being successful the pressure i mean you think about it like one what it, i don't think people appreciate drew how good you have to be to win right let alone beyond the tour like like most of these guys are just fighting to get on the tour and be, you know, top 50, top 100. I mean, to think that you have to be the best of the best of the best, and you get all these sponsors that are footing the bill and paying you money, and, you know, you, know, you deserve certain responsibility with that. Um, I don't know if that led to him doing what he did. Obviously, he had some demons, but, you know, I, I have this expression, I don't like spending other people's money. I also don't like living other people's lives, because on the outside looking in, you think, man, Guy's got the world by its balls, right? I mean, man, he, he's playing golf for a living. He's successful. He's uh, He's got a, a wife, well, not a wife, but he's got a fiance. I mean, everything seems to be going great for him. He's on the PGA Tour. He's been successful, you know, relatively speaking. You just, you know, you, you wonder. You know, you just wonder what would make someone, you know, kill themselves. But um, clearly there are issues behind the scenes that we don't know about, and you know, mental health, you know, people sometimes scoff at it a little bit, but it, it's it's obviously, you know, there and, and real. Yeah, and, and Brady was bringing up the point, like, on the on the tour, and this is probably something we should have went over with Eric. I didn't realize he was a, he was a golfer at Iowa State, a Division One golfer, of, like, it, yeah. you're alone a lot. And, and so there, it's not like a team sport type deal where you're around a lot of other people. 
um, on the tour. So that that's what I was more getting at is just like, uh, you know, guys struggling with, with different things kind of off the golf course and it affecting their play. Um, obviously, you know, th- this is, is next level with Grayson Murray, but, um, yeah, I didn't know if, if he, I kind of had an opinion on that, but either way we've, uh, well, and then the other, the other thing also, you know, Drew is just like, people don't realize, you know, a baseball player. All right. You know, you, you play a game and then you go to batting cage for an hour. You hit that, you know, in the baskets, you're in the gym for an hour. You shoot. Okay. And hockey, I'm, you know, imagine the same, but golf, you know, most of these guys, nearly every single one of these guys that you see, you know, after they're done playing for four, four and a half hours, then they go hit 200 golf balls after the tournament or after a round. I mean, it's just like the, the, the amount of practice for a golfer is just like unbelievable. So I, I could see where that could, you know, get to you after a while, knowing that that's what you have to do if you want to be successful. Right. But sad story, yeah. obviously. And, and, uh, you know, hearing people talk about him and, and the whole situation, um, you know, condolences obviously to the family. But you, you got to say, like, why? And all the guilt, you know, that you bring to yourself on why you didn't stop it. And a lot of questions. For sure. No, yeah, it, it, it's it's definitely uh, a tragedy in itself. And, um, yeah, man, just, I don't know, guys, just a, a tough one to talk about here in the PGA. But, yeah. Um, Getting back to the NBA, they shouldn't have played. Um, I'll say this, Drew: they shouldn't have yeah. played. They should not have finished the round. They, they shouldn't. They shouldn't have finished the tournament. And I know they said they went to his parents, and the parents said, "No, you know, he would have wanted you to to play." How do you really know that? Right? I mean, golf may have led him to do what he did. Why? Why would you assume that? I appreciate that the parents doing that. It's nice of them. But that's where the PGA, you know, in in this tournament, the Charles Swab should have just stepped in and said, you know. what? Nah, we're not going to finish. We're, we really aren't. It's not worth it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with you on that as well. And uh, to your point on, like, how much practice for golf, it's it's amazing. You're right. They go and they, they hit more after yeah. 18 holes. Man, I, yeah. I get out there on the links, and after, like, nine holes, I'm kind of good. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. These yeah. guys <laughs> right. Hitting that many golf balls. Guys, hour number three up next. Sports Grid. We salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Giffen came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm-hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid
welcome back in sports grid in game live primetime edition drew martin scott wetzel here until 10 p.m eastern time final hour starting right now as it's the dallas mavericks up by 10 50 to 40 second quarter action about four minutes left here in the second quarter we got boston in indiana up tomorrow looks like the celtics minus seven and a half minus eight point favorites 222 and a half being the total there but um scott it looks like tonight's action we are on pace for the over, I would say. It's 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 not like a lock. Um, and obviously the Mavs going off as minus one, minus one and a half point home favorites up by uh, double digits right now. They're sitting pretty. What are your overall thoughts uh, as we come to the end of the second quarter here? Yeah, uh, not happy. Carl Anthony Towns, he, he is so freaking overrated, Drew. But uh, one lousy stinking point, one point. You know, it's basically do or die you know, you're supposed to be the team's best or second best player, and he's got one lousy point. And, and you know, they're not like you're leading either. You're trailing by 10, right? Wait, wait, wait. I tell you, it's, it's, that's the NBA, though, right? I mean, all these players, they all think they're superstars, and they're all this and they're all that, except when it comes to crunch time. And, and this guy has disappeared, which is why Minnesota has always faltered in the postseason since he's been there. For the most part, he's disappeared, and the disappearing act is, is happening all over again. So not happy. They don't look good. Um, you want to grab them plus the seven and a half. I always kind of put a little separate, uh, you know, a couple shekels aside for a bet that's not going well to double down on it. Now probably would be the time, seven and a half, even a plus 230 in the money line. But I, I still like the over. Uh, 214 and a half. They got 90 points and you still have four and a half, almost five minutes left to go in the second quarter. So, you know, barring anything crazy, the goal is to get to about 110, 114, get it to where you only need 100 points in the second half. So another 20 to 25 more points in the final 439. Um, if you could do that, then that, that over still looks pretty good to me. They, they seem reluctant, Drew, to be bumping up. I'm not sure why. But um, it's still a halfway decent number, I think, for the over. You know, one of the reasons why, um, it, just watching this NBA playoffs, you, you, having the over ticket, we want Minnesota to be scoring. Yeah, you do be, because, uh, you know, betting the side. But even for the total, you, you don't want the Mavericks to go run out and hide. You know what I mean? And then towards right. in the fourth right. quarter, they'll, they'll take the air out of the ball, so to speak. And then, you know, scoring will really drop. So I think part of the reason they're not up in this total is because of that. You know, we, it is a double digit game right now. So kind of handicapping the side and total, they're not just separate. You you want them to kind of be close right, if right. you're, if you're holding an over ticket. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Because if you look at the games for the most part, that went under this postseason, it was the blowouts, you know, the, the competitive games have gone over the blowouts have stayed under uh, just because of what you said, that, that fourth quarter, the points weren't there. So maybe that's why they're they're keeping it as low as, as they are. Um, they kept it low the other night with, with Cleveland, Boston, too, and, and things did slow down second half. So that it's always a possibility. Um, but right now, I, I still think the over looks halfway decent. And then, you know, maybe second half, you, you know, get a little uh, hedge action and, and, you know, going under on that. So... Look at that, you know, Anthony Edwards, 11 points for Minnesota. That's not too bad, you know, 27 and a half. But it's, again, not, not what I expected out of him. You got uh, Anthony Towns with one. His number's down to 12 and a half points. 12 and a half stinking points. Wow. Luka's got 10. Kyrie's coming to play. He's got 11. Um, none of them really kind of jump off the page. Maybe Luka's number's down to 27 and a half. It was 30 and a half to start the game. Maybe you go over there. Uh, but otherwise, you know, the, the point total is nothing, uh, no, nothing crazy for me. Let me see if, um, you know, in my little goofy Carl uh, Anthony Towns uh, point rebound assist block steal, let's see how uh, my favorite son is doing. Um, he's got one point, so I, you know, <laughs> I, I got the point. He's got a rebound. I know that. He's that block. He Need has that, that block. That's the. No. No blocks, no, no steals. Blocks. I got the rebounds. I got the assists. I got the one point. So I, I need the, you know, the two that I figured we'd have to sweat out. Steal and, and, and rebound. Or uh, steal and block. So There's still some time left. But we're well, in we it. Gotta... Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. We still got hope. At least 25 hope. minutes of basketball. Especially since he's not scoring. Time. If he's not scoring, maybe he'll do something else. You know? That would be nice. 
Yeah, like like you realize, like, all right, to help my team win. You know, that's how I play right. basketball. <laughs> right. It's not do, the, do the he's 0 for 7 from the floor. 0 for 7. Jeez. He's so overrated. All right, they're down nine. You know, if you're a Minnesota fan, you know, you, you think they play like crap, basically. And, and, you know, if they keep it within striking distance, you know, you make this a, a six, seven, eight point game. You know, you still got a couple minutes here left. Um, you know, keep it within striking distance, Drew. Get into halftime and say, all right, you know, now we got to, you know, turn it on here a little bit. You don't want to be down like 12, 13, 14. This is a big, like, two minute stretch here. Cut it into the deficit rather than let the Dallas add on to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Important time in the basketball game coming into halftime that that last couple minutes and then the uh, first couple minutes of the second half. Always a uh, a very key moment in the sport of basketball. Uh, Jack, did, did we have an update with the uh, the Cubs and the Cardinals? Are, are they? It looks like, OK, 930. About 45 minutes. Kick. Yeah. OK. So so we're going to have some Jackson Sunday night forty to break. Okay, 940, 9.40 first pitch here for Sunday night baseball. So we'll have some late night action to be sweating out here. Scott, do you think that affects one team more than the other in the sport of baseball in terms of having a delay? Do you think it helps? Sometimes I wonder, you know, does it help the home team a little bit? Because, I don't know, you're a little bit more comfortable, you know, being at home in your home stadium. But that's the only thing that kind of pops out into my mind. And it wouldn't be a big angle for me, but it, do you think that it, uh, having a delay affects a bet one way or the other? This bet, maybe, maybe not. But tomorrow, Drew, uh, Cubs got to play at Milwaukee. Now, it's not far, you know, I haven't lived in the Midwest in Chicago. You know, Chicago to St. Louis is, you know, not that far. And then uh, Milwaukee from either Chicago or St. Louis is not that far either. But, you know, you're still hopping on a plane and, and flying a half hour, 45 minutes. And not only do they play tomorrow in Milwaukee, they play a day game tomorrow sure. in Milwaukee. Boy, Major League Baseball did not do the Cubs any favors by scheduling them. That's not See, that's not right. I, I don't care if it is driving distance. You should not play a Sunday night game and then play a Monday afternoon game in another city. That's That's stupid to me. So I would be betting if you could tomorrow on Milwaukee right now. Because this thing, listen, they're going to try and get this in, Drew, right? I mean, they, St. Louis and the Cubs play you know, enough times where they don't really have to, but this is the Sunday night game. If this was a Tuesday, they'd probably say, all right, you know what? See you later, boys. We'll do it again sometime else. Um, but this is the Sunday night game. Four-letter network wants their game, so they're going to wait there forever, point being. And by the time that game ends, if it starts 945, we'll say, with no other delays, 10.45, 11.45, 12.45. It's going to end right around, you know, 1 o'clock in the morning. Then you're going to talk to the media, do all the things you have to do. You're not going to get out of there until 2 o'clock, and then you're going to fly to Milwaukee, which an hour's flight, I imagine. It's, like I said, it's not that far. Um, but still, you got to get out of the hotel, into the airplane, out of the airplane, into a new hotel, and then you got to be at the ballpark noon tomorrow to get ready for a 4 o'clock game. Bet the Brewers. Bet them now before the boys in Vegas and everyone else realizes what's happening. Because the line, no doubt, will be higher tomorrow than it is right now. Yeah, seeing the Brew Crew minus 115 right now, guys. So you're only having to lay 15 cents on that Sunday night baseball fade. And man, this is, uh, if you're into that kind of thing, Sunday night baseball fade, which I have been, uh, this is kind of a glaring situation where... What, what Scott is talking about, guys, with this delay affecting tomorrow's game. And, yeah, it's a 410 Eastern first pitch. Scott Wetzel, Drew Martin, short break. We'll be right back. Sports Grid. We salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families. 
and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer too, because people thought he was going to have a big, a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In game live, prime time only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on SportsGrid. And now you have to qualify in these majors. You, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now. And, and, you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Prime Time Edition. Drew Martin, Scott Wetzel here until 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Sirius Channel 159 radio affiliates across the country. Thanks for joining us. Looks like the Cubs and the Cardinals slated to start 945 Eastern Time. First pitch for Sunday Night Baseball. So we got the delay. We were just talking about it in the last segment, guys. For tonight's game, it, it could have an effect, but uh, more so, Scott brought up the point for tomorrow's action. We got a lot of day games on the Monday baseball card. And sure enough, both the Cardinals and the Cubs are playing and both of them with travel, meaning the Cardinals are not staying in St. Louis. They're actually facing the Cincinnati Reds 410 Eastern start. It's Lance Lynn as the slated starter. Nick Lodolo, the Southpaw going for the Reds. He's a pretty good pitcher. Minus 128 seems to be the low water mark here. Minus 120. Um, the Reds as the home favorite. And we also, you know, we already talked about it with the Cubs having the same travel against Milwaukee. And it looks like the Brewers minus 115, total of eight. So Sunday night baseball fade, full effect with the delay. Um, you were talking about maybe parlaying it, uh, a, a little Brewers and Reds and fading the Cardinals and the Cubs here, Scott? Yeah, you know, I, I get greedy, Drew. I, I got big bills. So, you know, <laughs> instead of just playing them straight and figuring at worst you'll go one and one, that's not enough for me. Put them in a parlay, and we'll get plus 251 odds right now on FanDuel. So, um, and, and both teams are at home, which is kind of weird. Steele may be going for the, uh, for the Cubbies, but he hasn't pitched well this year. So that's not necessarily a bonus if, in fact, he does go. So I don't know why uh, – you know, Milwaukee, pretty good team, obviously, right? Uh, just took two or three from the Red Sox. Um, you know, why Milwaukee at home would be minus 106 on FanDuel. And then the uh, same thing with St. Louis. You know, Cardinals playing good. They won nine of their last 11, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, Cincinnati stinks. So, uh, although they did, did just sweep the L.A. Dodgers. How about the Dodgers losing uh, five in a row? I don't know the last time. I have to look that up. I know they lost four in a row last year. But I had to go see the last time they lost five in a row. This this Dodger team is really uh, it's kind of weird. You know, Dodgers and Braves both through. You know, you figure they're going to be the best teams in the American or National League, right? When everything is said and done. But for now, that they, they do seem beatable, right? You know, the bats aren't like going crazy. That Dodger top of the lineup, they all should have like fifteen thousand RBIs and runs, and it's that's really not the case. Pitching's been a little suspect. Uh, same thing with the Braves. Pitch has been great, but the bats are, have been quiet for, for Atlanta. So, 
Um, but anyway, back to the Cubs. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why they would be basically picking both those two teams. So I will take Cincinnati and Milwaukee, put them in a parlay at two and a half to one. And uh, hope that the travel and hope I, I hope they extend this thing to three o'clock in the morning. I'm telling you, put the bet in now, because once people start talking about this, those lines will shot up, shoot up. I guarantee you Cincinnati minus 124 will be higher and Milwaukee minus 106 will definitely be higher against uh, the Cubs tomorrow. I'm with you. I think that's a smart entry point here, guys, to get down on that Sunday night baseball fade. Um, and, and we see it here. I mean, actually, FanDuel dealing uh, the Brewers as the slight underdog. I mean, just minus 106. So, man, it, interesting kind of handicapping here coming on Monday. I mean, a holiday, early starts, a lot of them. And the, the one I had questions about was the Cincinnati Reds just because, man, I, I forget what it was. They were like 4-15 and 15 in the month of May. And I don't like to catch the fall at yeah. night. You know, I, I don't like betting on those teams. But you're right. It, it, they might have made the turning point because they just swept the Dodgers at, all at plus prices, by the way. I mean, they, they won about five units over the weekend if you were betting them. Um, so I, I don't think it's necessarily catching the falling knife with the uh, big red machine here talking about the Cincinnati Reds. They've won three straight, all as dogs. So I'm with you. I'm, I'm going to jump on with you. I, I don't know about parlay it. I'm not a big parlay guy, but hey, may, maybe, you know, this angle, it makes sense to parlay it on the Sunday night baseball. I like where your head's at, Scott. Yeah. The only sad thing is you can't really hedge because they're both at the same time. You know, if you had one at one o'clock and the other one at four o'clock, if you win the one at one, then if you want to hedge a little bit, you can do that. But both ba- both starting around four o'clock or so Eastern time. So, but uh, that, that's okay. Um, yeah. How do you figure the Reds? You know, I mean, playing awful ball, you, you said it there, Drew, right? At 4 and 15, something like that in the month of May. They were 0 and 7 after wins, their last seven wins heading into this series as well. And then they sweep the Dodgers. I mean, I mean, it's just like, boy, you think you predict baseball games, but um, no, you just, sometimes you can, but other, other times you just scratch your head and just say, you know what? Crazy. So Dodgers have lost five in a row. They scored two runs the last two games. Held to one run apiece. Um, that great Dodger lineup in, in a great, you know, hitter's ballpark as well against Cincinnati pitching, which isn't exactly, you know, a who's who of Hall of Famers. And, and they can't muster up more than a couple of runs these last two days. Strange. It, it really is. And, I mean, what, they've lost five straight games, talking about the Dodgers, guys. And they're down just under 10 units. You know, that's the thing with baseball. Um, If you can kind of catch these big plus prices, you can make some serious money. But at the same time, if you're laying this juice with the Dodgers, you're out of money after the last five days. I mean, because the five losses, they were favorites, heavy favorites. I I mean, favorites in all the games, they were minus 300 in one of them, minus 200 in another. So you start stacking it up here. I mean, if you're a hundred dollar better, you're down like $990 in the last five days betting the Dodgers. And to tell you the truth, you bought up, you brought up the Braves as well. You know, it, it, there's a, probably a probable chance, you know, looking at the the futures odds board in Major League Baseball, that those are the two favorites in the National League, you know, to face each other in the National League Championship Series. And they're both not playing good baseball right now, Sky. It, it's one of those things, you know, is this kind of going to clunk down and, and cause some issues for both of these two teams? Or do you think this is just a hiccup and and they'll be off to playing good baseball here shortly? Yeah, it's it's probably just a hiccup, right? I, I mean, uh, nothing serious. Dod- you're right. Dodgers are plus 280. Uh, Stanks are plus 550. Rays plus 550. And then Philadelphia with the best record in baseball yeah. at uh, plus 650. So, although Philly's seen that lost two or three to Colorado. So, again, go figure. This has been a weird weekend for sure in Major League Baseball. Yeah, always a little tricky heading up there a mile high. Scott Wetzel, Drew Martin, short break. We'll be right back. Sports Grid. We salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. 
please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In Game Live, prime time only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said we need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors. You, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm-hmm. So in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now. And, and, you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Prime Time Edition. Drew Martin, Scott Wetzel here until 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We got the NBA action going on, and it's halftime, 60 to 52. That's the Mavericks on top of the Timberwolves. We will have uh, actually we're underway in the WNBA, Dallas and LA, 23 all. 55 seconds left in the first quarter tie game in that one. And we are slated to start here, guys, in about 20 minutes for Sunday Night Baseball. The Cubs and the Cardinals, Julian Assad and Sonny Gray. Total of eight. Looks like the Cardinals, minus 140 home favorites. I took a bite on the Cubs, plus 130, and enlisted Assad as the uh, starting pitcher. We were talking a little bit here about tomorrow's MLB card. I like where Scott's head is at. Uh, Sunday Night Baseball fade. With this delay, that would be fading the Cardinals and the Cubs tomorrow. So that would put us on the Brewers. Looks like Gasser is the slated starter there. And then, um, yeah, maybe maybe parlaying it. It looks like Scott's a little bit uh, rolling the dice. You don't like parlays, huh? You don't don't like the parlay guy? Not even two? No, I, I, I at times I will, but I think like long term, you know, I just everything I've read and, and you know, playing the numbers – you know, over 10,000 bets, you'll make more money uh, with single bets or lose less money with single bets than parlaying them up. I, I don't know. I, but at, at times, you know, if I'm going out, hanging out with friends, I'll, I'll parlay a little action for entertainment. But I, I don't think it's the best you believe way those to numbers? attack sports betting. I yeah, do. I, I tell you, you might be right. I, I, let's, let's have a little, a little fun here. You, you might be right, but every time, Drew, I've – like challenge Vegas and said, let me do this. It comes out to be about the same Uh, point uh, case in point. um, I, who was, I think it was the Dodgers a couple of years ago. Um, I honestly forget which team it was, but I said, all right, I'm going to keep track and see how much money I would win. If I bet the Dodgers on the money line every single time or minus a run and a half. Because, you know, who wants to lay minus 240, 250 all the time, right? Yeah. So I, I, I forget, if, in fact, if it was the Dodgers, but it might have been another team. But I said, let me, let me kind of keep track of that. And I thought um, betting them on the uh, minus a run and a half, you'd win more money. But in the end, it was basically dead even. Just dead even. And then there was another time 
Uh, there was a team, again, I honestly, I forget who it was. It was recently. I do all these things. So that I was going to bet on them versus against them and see, you know, which, if you pick one and, and did it religiously, which one would be more profitable. And it was basically dead even. And, you know, every once in a while I'll do that. And there's such eye openers. Like, wow. I, I don't think so. When I hear people say, well, everyone says if you bet parlays, you know, that's a sucker's bet. You're going to lose. You know what? I don't think so. I really don't. I think in the end, you know, and you can keep track of this. You do it for a month, you know, and just have some fun. Put, you know, pick two teams and bet them straight and then put a bet them in a parlay and figure out uh, which way you'd win more money. I bet it would be basically the same, Drew. I really do. Okay. I mean, I've never done it. So I, I don't have like, you know, facts to come back, but I don't know, man. I, I mean, non-correlated parlays. Scott, I feel like sometimes if you can find correlation, you know, like the last week of the NFL or like, you know, when games start to not matter for some teams, if they're already like eliminated, I think in that sense, maybe right. there could be like correlated parlays. But or if you pick a team and an over, like what I try and do, and again, all rules are made to be broken, right? But you know, I would say seventy-five percent of my parlays are a team and the over, or a team and the under in that same game, because it's the same yeah. thinking. Uh, you know, uh, I, you pick a pitcher. You know, Joe Schmo's on a hill and he's been pitching great, right? Okay, so I'm gonna bet that pitcher. We'll, we'll just uh, say the Red Sox and the under. Because my thinking is he's pitching great. So I, I do stuff like that, you know, whereas I don't generally pick two separate games because then I got to be right twice. This parlay, I only got to be right one time. You know, if there's a bad pitcher on the hill, I'm going to bet against him in the over because I think he's going to give up a ton of runs. So it's kind of, you know, you take advantage of the thing you think is going to happen. So yeah, I like doing that the angle you're exploiting yeah if, if it's the same and to tell you the truth even though it's not the same game tomorrow the angle is the same so i think in this situation you might right. be on to something in terms of parlaying them it's the sunday night baseball with a delay that's the angle you're attacking therefore you could be right about the angle you know and then might as well like uh parlay it and get that extra plus price on top of it fading the cubs and the cardinals He's Scott Wetzel. I'm Drew Martin. Short break. We'll be right back. Sports Grid. We salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Giffen came out and said we need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on SportsGrid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note of saying this but also it's like hey 
this is the world in which we live in right now, and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live, Primetime Edition, Sirius Channel 159, radio affiliates across the country. Thanks for joining us. Drew Martin, Scott Wetzel here until 10 p.m. Eastern time as uh, they're starting to warm up here for Sunday night baseball. We're getting a late start, had a weather delay. Cardinals and Cubs getting ready to go in about 10 minutes. I jumped on the Cubs plus 130. Looks like the Cardinals minus 140 as the home favorite. Sonny Gray on the hill up against Julian Hassad. We got... um. Second half action going in the NBA. Dallas up 62-55 over the Timberwolves. 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Scott, did you like anything here in the second half of the NBA game? Are, are you adding anything to your uh, your portfolio in the NBA for the second half with Minnesota and Dallas? Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty much uh, all been on Minnesota. So, it, but you know what? Uh, I was just tweeting out. You know, they're they're okay. You know, they they weather the storm there, Drew. Like we talked about just before the break, uh, they, they got it into single digits as it was for the most part. But there was a chance, you know, that they would be trailing by 12, 13, 14, and you really didn't want that. So, uh, trail by single digits. You know, they're keeping it in that eight point range. Uh, not allowing it to go to double digits. And, you know, it's really hard to beat a team from start to finish. It really is. So I'm expecting somewhere along the line uh, the teacups here to make a little bit of a run. Uh, the over still looks solid. Uh, we mentioned that many times at the first uh, half, right? Uh, we're at 69.60 uh, with nine minutes, nine and a half minutes left. They're, they're giving you 224 and a half. You know, kind of like the Boston game. And that they were so reluctant, like we brought up, to, to punch that number up a little bit. But eventually they did. Um, and while it did go over the original number, it actually went under a lot of the other numbers. But uh, they seem to be a little more uh, uh, acceptable to pushing this number a little bit higher at, at 224.5. So if you bought the 207.5, this would, wouldn't be a bad little under. You know, get yourself a 17-point middle if, if you have that ticket, like we suggested you have. But... I'm still thinking uh, Minnesota's going to win. I'll, I'll grab them plus the seven and a half. Okay, seven in the hook here, guys, in-game live. We got uh, tomorrow's MLB card. We talked about it in terms of fading Sunday night baseball with the delay, the Cardinals and the Cubs. That would put us on uh, Cincinnati and the Milwaukee Brewers. But talking about Monday's action here on the Diamond, Scott, it's a full slate, you know, a pretty full slate anyway, and a lot of day action. We got first game up, uh, 1 o'clock Eastern. Your Boston Red Sox up against the Baltimore Orioles. Cole Irvin going for the O's and Criswell going for the Sox. Eight in the hook, minus 165. That's the Orioles at home. Always tough to go against the Orioles for me, but uh, Boston, we talked about it earlier in the show. I mean, your, your Red Sox, kind of surprising, you know, uh, given the preseason expectations there in the AL East but they're over 500 they're right in the mix and to tell you the truth Scott I mean one of the best pitching uh, up until uh, about a week ago it still might be there I just haven't checked it this week uh the lowest team ERA you know starting pitching has been yep. great for the Sox overall um do, do you like them at all uh to tomorrow in Baltimore plus price first game up no <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to say yes, but no, they, they have not. They, they got swept at home in a series by Baltimore earlier this year. They didn't play well against them last year. Basically, since Baltimore has turned it on, uh, they, they've owned the Red Sox. A little rivalry dating back to the Dustin Pedroia days and the brawls that they had. So I, I think Boston gets a little extra excited to play Boston. So, I, in fact, I'm a little surprised, Drew, that Baltimore's only a minus 155 favorite. Um, uh, I know the Red Sox have won five of seven, but they've also lost two of three. So however you want to look at it. So, you know, Irvin on the hill against Criswell for the Red Sox, you know, maybe even split there. I, not, not that I thought they would be two to one favorites, but, you know, I, I figured they'd be close to the minus 170 or so, 175. That would be a number. You know, you look at these things and, and say, all right, tomorrow, you know, when people start breaking it all down, you know, are they really going to be only minus 155 favorites? I doubt it. I, I think they'll be in the 160s. So 
I do like Baltimore. They're a good team. Uh, I don't know what they need to do to get the, to get more and more respect. I will say that with the boys in Vegas, but not like they really should in my book. So the um, no, Red Sox are not a good uh, a matchup, or, or Baltimore is not a good matchup for Boston. So I would not play Boston tomorrow. Okay, I'm picking up what you're laying down, and yeah, you. You know, you talk about respect with the Orioles, and since they've been able to turn it around, you made reference to since opening day of 2022, the Baltimore Orioles are up over 60 units of profit, meaning $100 better just betting wow. the Orioles blindly every single game since opening day of 2022. You've made over $6,000. I mean, this run that they've been on multi-year here, not getting the respect from the odds makers. It's, it's probably one of the best profitable runs of any organization in, like, American sports. I, I don't remember anything like this going on for multiple years like that. Uh, will it catch up to them? Probably at some point. I mean, you can't just keep kind of uh, giving away money with the Baltimore Orioles, but we are seeing it a little bit. Um, they're, they're starting to lay a little bit more hefty of a price tag. We got Toronto and the Chicago White Sox. That looks to be the second game up, 210 Eastern here. Chris Bassett, I'm still seeing undecided for the White Sox. Man, this Blue Jays team. Doesn't matter. It, w- w- mi- know, minus what, 200 Doesn't really here? matter. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe it does matter. But ultimately, does it really matter who's pitching for the White Sox? I mean, you know, Chris Sale's <laughs> not coming out of the bullpen, White Sox fans. So, um that's a tough one. You, you know, who wants to lay minus one ninety five? See, like that one, you'd have to put in a parlay, uh, or you lay the run and a half. You know, you, you want to go that route. Um, but I don't trust Bassett on the road, to tell you the truth. So that that would probably be a stay away. You can't put American money on on the white side. You can't do that. Uh, but I don't. I don't want to. You know, also put the money on four and six Chris Bassett on the road. So. I'm surprised yeah, they're that big. That's a pretty big favorite, Drew. You know, I mean, if you like underdogs and you want to take a little flyer, I mean, Toronto laying almost two to one on the road. Really? Uh, they're 11 and 17 on the road. So at least the, well, the White Sox are 10 and 18 at home. They're not great, um, obviously. But that might be a little flyer on, on, on the White Sox if you had to. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely wouldn't lay the number on Toronto. I mean, they just lost. They, they gave up, what, 14 runs today to the Detroit Tigers. I mean, they're, they're what, seven games under 500. They've lost eight units on the season. I, I know they're, you know, a big market, Canada's team. They got, you know, good-looking uniforms. But this team has been burning cash. They really have been. I mean, the lineup isn't what we kind of thought. I, I definitely wouldn't lay this number. And talking about, you know, does it matter with the White Sox uh, who's pitching? What if Crochet isn't on the hill, uh, the big lefty, he actually pitched today and they lost. I, I think he's their best right. pitcher. You know, he throws 97, 98 miles per hour from from the left side. They did lose today, but it, when he's on the hill, I'll think about betting the White Sox. But if he's not, Scott, they're they're fade city for me, man. I, I don't want anything to do betting on the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, funny little story. Just to let people know, it happens to everybody, people. Everybody, right? So I never play this prop, uh, Drew, but for some goofy reason yesterday, I was online early, and FanDuel offers you a fun little prop of which game will have the most runs scored. Mm -hmm. Okay, why why not? You know, I picked two games. Picked the Yankees in in San Diego. Don't ask me why. I I did. And I picked uh, two days ago Toronto and Detroit. They were playing an afternoon game. And I figured there'd be a ton of runs scored, and maybe I could start hedging a little bit if I can get like 10, 11 runs. So long story short, that game ends two to one. Today, Toronto and Detroit, 14-11. Did I play it again today? <laughs> of course not. I only played it yesterday. So I get 25 runs in the dopey game today, which I easily would have won the bet versus two days ago when I actually made the bet, and it didn't come close. So... I know a lot of people have those stories. It, it, it happens to everybody. It really does. Yeah, that, that, that's the frustrating part of, of sports betting, where you kind of, like, get it right, just not the exact timing of it. Yeah, every, if you right. bet enough, yeah, yeah you, you know what he's talking about here, guys. As we are uh, first pitch coming up um, on the other side, Cardinals and Cubs. Scott Wetzel, Drew Martin, short break, Sports Grid.
We salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm-hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and you and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid Welcome back in Sports Grid in Game Live Primetime Edition. Drew Martin, Scott Wetzel here until 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to take a look ahead here towards Monday's MLB card as we are underway for Sunday Night Baseball after the delay. Sunny Gray just threw the first pitch, 92 mile an hour strike. So Cardinals and Cubs underway. I got to tell you, Scott, looking at this stadium here in St. Louis, Bush Stadium, got, got to tip your cap. Nobody to the, there, uh, right? The Car- no, the Cardinals fans. No, they're fans there. Yeah. Wow. Man. Really? Yeah, I, I'm surprised. That's the I mean, Cubs. The whole... Cubs Cardinals, but that's pretty good. That's a two hour rain delay, two and a half hour rain, right? That still starts seven o'clock. Almost a three hour rain delay, and they're and they're still hanging around. That's pretty good, you know right? It, yeah. Do you go to many games like baseball or football game, anything like that? Scott, I used or... to. Not yeah. anymore. Not anymore. I used to cover, uh, you know, lurking for a local radio station. I used to cover the Yanks. Uh, so I, I went there quite a bit and, you know, been to Fenway Park a few times and, and you know, Shea Stadium or Mets uh, Citibank. But not within the last couple of years. No desire. When I was younger, um, like in my college years, I, I, I caught a Marlins game one time. It was a day game and there was a, a rain delay. I, that's the only one I've ever gone to where there was actually a delay. And like, like if you're a drinker, it, it's actually not bad because you can just kind of, you know, pound beers back there. It's, it's, it's one thing <laughs> like I never, I never realized until, uh, until I went to one. So who knows, maybe these Cardinals fans uh, will, will be a little bit louder tonight with the, uh, the two hour build up here, but um, going down the card, we, we broke down a couple of the early matchups here, Boston and Baltimore, Toronto and the Chicago White Sox. We also got another one, two ten Eastern time Royals and twins. Ryan versus Marsh looks like the twins pretty heavy favorites here minus 170 total of eight AL central matchup actually an important one you know uh, the Minnesota twins uh, a lot of people coming into the preseason like them to win uh, the AL central they're sitting at 28 and 24 actually the AL central overall outside of the White Sox has been pretty surprising to the positive I mean we got the Tigers just a game under 500 Outside of the White Sox, everybody else up over 500. So Minnesota, what, seven and a half games back from Cleveland. We get Kansas City two and a half back from Cleveland. KC has been a great bet. They're up 10 units on the season. Um, I would kind of circle the Royals here. but It's nothing I fired away on, Scott. Did you like anything in this AL Central matchup? 
you know, I did like uh, the Royals. I've been playing them a lot lately. Drew, they won eight in a row. They had that winning streak snap today at Tampa Bay, but they still, you know, won the series against Tampa Bay, taking two out of the three. They swept the Tigers. They swept Oakland before that. And they're 14 games over 500. You know, I know there were some people that, that you know, played a little hunch that they thought Kansas City was going to be good this year. And I, I generally need to see it to believe it. Uh, but I believe it. They're a good team. The pitching is there. Hitting's been, uh, been okay. Um, you want to give me, you know, a plus 160, 170, you know, even at Minnesota, I will gladly take uh, Kansas City. See, this is where, like, the boys in Vegas to me just are just reluctant, you know, and it's them and it's the betters, obviously, just reluctant to buy in. I mean, I don't know how many games you need to see, Drew, that you finally say, all right, you know what, they're a good team. I was wrong. I thought Kansas City was going to be awful. Uh, but after 55 games and go or 54 games, and going 34 and 20, I'm ready to buy in. So even on the road, they got a you know winning road record. I will take them with those kind of odds against basically anybody. I'm with you. Yeah, I, I think the Royals are the side there at the the, the plus price. We got 410 Eastern starts here and a bunch of them, guys. So mi- mid afternoon here on the East Coast, there's going to be a whole lot of baseball. I'm seeing like five or six of them, all with the first pitch at. 410 Eastern Cleveland traveling a mile high here to face the Colorado Rockies. Austin Gomber, the lefty going for the Rocks. Curry going for the Guardians. Looks like Guardians minus 130 road favorites, total of 10. You talked about it earlier in the show. I mean, the Rocks took two of three from the Phillies. One of the best teams, I believe by record-wise, the best team in Major League Baseball cashing as plus 176 today. They also cashed on Friday night plus 187. So uh, making some money, at least in the recent. And we've known this from past years, Scott. I mean, the Rockies, terrible road team. But at home, they they played a lot better baseball. You know, the dynamics of it, the thin air, they're used to it a little bit more. I do think it makes sense. They're only two games under 500 at home. And that's coming from a team that's 18 and 34 on the season. They're they're losing three, three games for every game they win on the road, just seven and 21. So I'm not interested in the Rocks on the road, but when they are at home, particularly coming off of a home series, playing better baseball, I don't know. I kind of have the Rockies circled here at home with the plus price. Tough to go up against the the Cleveland side, though. That lineup, a lot of bat to ball. They don't strike out a lot, and they're playing good baseball overall for this season. So kind of a tricky handicap here. Did you like anything in cores? Yeah, Cleveland. Uh, I've been betting Cleveland as well. They've won nine in a row. I mean, who would have thought Kansas City and Cleveland would have two of the longest winning streaks in baseball this year at this point of the year? Uh, Nine straight. They're another team. You know, I I played them every single game two series ago against the Mets when they were at home. They were like pick them, uh, Drew, basically every game against the lousy, stinking Mets. And, And they found ways to win every single game. They go out to L.A. L.A. stinks. The Angels are just atrocious without... Uh, Rendon and Trout in the lineup and, and they won every single game as basically pick a minus 120 and as much as you know Colorado did beat Philadelphia give them, you know tip the cap to that but it's still the Rockies they're still awful so for Cleveland to be only minus 135 favorites if this was the Yankees with their record or the Red Sox with their record uh, you know Houston with their record they would be minus 175 favorites. Like Philadelphia was two to one favorites in, in every single game. That's what Cleveland should be. So value wise, uh, I like the uh, Guardians tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. And I agree with you. It's, it's, it's the uniform. If they were wearing a different uniform and a different team playing the same baseball, it would be a different price tag. They're not getting as much respect in the betting markets, even though they're playing good baseball. I mean, only laying what? At a lot of sports yeah. books, less than minus 130 here against the Rockies, like you talked about. Not a very good team overall. We get St. Louis and Cincinnati. We've talked about this one. I do like this, this the Cincinnati side. I mean, St. Louis is playing right now. Who knows how many bullpen arms they're going to go through. They do have Sonny Gray on the hill, so maybe a good start. But uh, we broke this one down in depth, uh, Scott. So uh, we'll hit we'll hit more on the other side. Tomorrow's MLB, guys. Don't go anywhere. Scott Wetzel, Drew Martin, short break. Sports Grid.
where we salute the brave and courageous women and men serving in the United States military, protecting our freedom. Please take time this Memorial Day weekend to honor the memory and sacrifice of our military veterans and their loving families and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their service to our nation. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Giffen came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors. You, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now. And, and, you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back in final segment, Sports Grid in game live prime time edition. Drew Martin, Scott Wetzel for the last three hours. We'll take a look ahead, uh, get some best bets out on tomorrow's MLB card, NBA, NHL, all slated to uh, get going tomorrow as well. And guys, an update on the NBA game 77 71. Is that the Dallas Mavericks on top of the Timberwolves? Am I up to date on that, Scott? Or are you seeing a, a, a different score here? 79, 79 all. all. Uh, but they come back. They were leading 79-77 in uh, Dallas in a bucket. So, And again, just to reiterate, uh, way overpaced. Still three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. So that, uh, that 207 and a half, for, you might as well rip up those tickets. And I know that's a cardinal sin. You never rip up anything until it's actually done. But uh, we're at 224 and a half. Um, 81-79 now. Dallas back on top. So Minnesota's there. You know, um, I told you, Drew, that, you know, it's hard to beat a team from start to finish. It happens, but, you know, credit Minnesota for kind of keeping this thing within striking distance. Now they got it within a possession. Still got, you know, well over a quarter to go. I, I think they're going to win this game. Uh, it's down to two and a half. The money line is plus 146, minus 188 on Dallas. Um, I, I, I told you before the show, NBA wants this 2-1. Referees want this 2-1. Four Letter Network wants this 2 1. TNT wants this 2 1. Salesmen want this 2 1. It'll be 2 to 1. <laughs> he did call it. Guys, I want it 2 to 1 for more shows, more material, you know, future shows. So it'll be 2 to it 1. Makes, it makes total sense, oh. Scott. You know, in, in with the NBA Finals, like, locked in to start what, June 6th? It, it's kind of weird. I know the Super yeah. Bowl is like that, but. The World Series isn't like that, is it? Would the NHL Stanley Cup Finals be like that as well? Do you know? Yeah, they're all like that now. They're all like that. The World yeah, Series is too? Yeah, networks a gazillion dollars. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Let, let me, you know what? Let, let, I'm going to say yes without being a positive. I know it's the NBA is. But let me Google uh, World Series starting dates. I think it has something to do with I'm when the series sure. ends. Like the the, nope. the AL no, and those NLP. days are long gone. Really? Those days are long gone, Drew. Yeah. Oh. Friday, October 27th. You started your World Series. Yeah. So it, it's the same. Yeah, the it's network, they, they want to line it all up. Locked in. Locked in. The other series aren't, 
but the World Series and NBA and NHL, yeah. Yeah, they, they need to set their programming and, and make sure that these are the dates that they want and, um, you know, they, they block out other programming and everything. Yeah, it's been that way for a little while. It's it's dumb yeah. because, like I said, you, you could get, you know, Dallas could win, you know, and, and we could have a week and a half of no basketball, literally. Uh, but that's how it is. I wonder Absolutely. if it's And then they better. wonder why they don't get ratings, though. And baseball, too. They wonder why, okay, no one's watching. No one's watching because we turned this. We turned it over. Football season is here. We're not going to wait a week and a half to, to watch, uh, you know, baseball, even the World Series, unless you're interested in really those two teams. And, and same thing in the NBA. You're going to make us wait a week, right? I, I don't think either one of these series is going to go much past five, so you're, you're going to still get a week off. Nobody wants to wait around a week for the NBA. You're not that entertaining, NBA. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not that entertaining. So, yeah, it's an interesting concept. Uh, and, and, and like the ratings wise, I, I don't know if it would be better or worse. I mean, obviously they think it would be better, but you, you're right. It almost gets out of like out of sight, out of, out of mind a little bit. And particularly with baseball, yeah, like yeah, going yeah. up against football, that just doesn't make sense yeah. to me. I don't know. Well, yep. Scott, I'll tell you, man, man the, the show flew by for a holiday weekend here, Sunday night. It's always a pleasure working with you. Uh, you want to get anything else out on in terms of tomorrow's card of, of what you're looking to bet before we shut it down? I'm, the only thing I'll say is I'm disappointed that Miami is facing a right-handed pitcher. Although, Drew, today, for only the second time this year, the Miami Marlins won a baseball game with the opposing team starting a left-handed pitcher. They were 1-18, and 18, including two days ago's loss. Well, yesterday's loss. So every time Miami, you know, plays somebody, I always the first thing I look. Is it a lefty or a righty? So how about that? They're 2-18 and 18 now against left-handed pitching. How bizarre is that? So I'll be back on tomorrow, 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern time, me and George Kurtz. Hopefully you guys can all tune in. Absolutely. That will be a good one, guys. Tomorrow, uh, Memorial Day, 4 to 8, Scott Wetzel. George Kurtz getting us going here on Sports Grid, And even with that Miami Marlins, they only scored three runs against the lefties. So that's a trend I would definitely look to go forward. Scott Wetzel at Opposite Picks on Twitter. Drew Martin at Drew Martin Betts at Sports Grid at Sports Grid TV. Signing out, guys.